Vice President Yemi Oshibayo has support the call for decentralization of Nigerian police and express great displeasure over the rumors making round that President Muhammad Buhari is in support of the Fulani Esman attack. Oshibajo, who spoke at the opening ceremony for the two-day summit on national security organized by the Senate on the spite of killing by the Esman and other crime across the country, noted that President Muhari is deeply worried about the situation and is working around the clock with his national security agency to put an end to the incessant attack and insecurity across the country. And he prefaces this by saying that every Nigerian is entitled to adequate security from government for their lives and livelihoods. Government fails in that responsibility often, but I must never, but I must say never deliberately. Every killing demeans us as a people. Every killing undermines the authority of the state. This is why the suggestion sometimes that because the president is full of he has ignored the killings by a herdsman. It's both untrue and unfair. In any event, the herdsmen and farmer clashes resulting in deaths have been with us for at least two decades. And I've worked with him for three years now. And I do not know of any one issue that has given him more concern or on which he has spent more time with security chiefs as this particular issue. Worried by the multi-dimensional security challenges facing the nation, he advocated for the state policing infrastructure in addition to other security forces which he described as insufficient to address Nigerian security problem. For a country our size to meet the one policeman to 400 persons, the UN prescribed ratio, would require nearly triple our current police force. Far more funding of the police, far more funding of the military and security agencies is required. Third, we cannot realistically police a country the size of Nigeria centrally from Abuja. State police and other community policing methods are clearly the way to go. Four, that we must, four, that we must intensify existing collaboration with our neighbors in the Chad Basin, especially border communities, to prevent the movement of small arms and in disarming armed pastoralists and other and bandits who go through our borders day after day. He also implored Nigeria not to allow the Fulani Esma crisis to degenerate into ethnic religious crisis that could spell doom for the old nation and also assure that executive already is already working with the legislature to find lasting solution to the security challenges. And last thing that we must avoid the danger of allowing this conflict to harden into religious or ethnic conflict. This is the responsibility of political, religious, and all other parts of our leadership elite in Nigeria. Earlier, Senior President Bukola Saraki, in his opening remark, stated that the summit will help to achieve some consensus about what needs to be done in short term as well as long term to bring comfort and relief to those affected and assurance of security throughout the country. It is expected that the end of our deliberations and submissions will have a more profound understanding of the nature of the crisis as well as a realistic assessment of the strengths and weaknesses of our security assets. We should also have a more accurate assessment of the challenges to the current disposition of the Nigerian state to the level of preparedness of all its law and other agencies to secure to security threats. Let me add that this summit should help us to achieve some consensus around what needs to be done in the short term as well as the long term to bring comfort and relief to those affected and assurance of security around the country. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we, are, we should have failed in our responsibility if by the end of this summit we didn't succeed in triggering high levels of collaboration and cooperation among all stakeholders of a character that can be sustained and placed at the service of the nation. The spirit of collaboration and cooperation is therefore key. He demanded the participants that the country need leadership that will work to douse the flame and reduce the tension in the land, urging them to lower the barrier in their action and rhetoric and refrain from playing politics with the crisis. The sharp increase in murderous violence over and above the relatively manageable level of security, of insecurity, 
that has plagued our country for some time, jolted us out of any large vestiges of complacency or denial. There can be no denying the horrible reality in many parts of our country today. People who should be neighbors are turning on one another and taking up arms. These attacks and reprisal attacks are an intolerable cycle of hell that must be broken. Killings, kidnappings, mayhem, and general lawlessness cannot be the new normal. We must take this country back and restore order. Sarkey expressed hope that the outcome we fit into search for a solution. From Abuja, Muiwa Bamdele reporting. Ahead of the 2019 general elections, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has warned against open vote buying process in polling units during the elections. Chairman of the Commission, Mahmoud Yakubu, issued the warning while planning host to the Chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Ibrahim Mago in Abuja. Yakubu, who solicited the support of EFCC in the area of vote buying and party campaign finance, stressed that the nation democracy should not be in the open market. The ending post further assured that the commission will remain an unbiased umpire, maintaining that it will not work for or against any candidate or political party. And once we get our democracy right, we are on the way to solving all the national, social and developmental problems bedeviling the nation. And if we get our democracy and elections right, it will also be quieter for the EFCC because most of the big cases we hear are related to elections and politics. Earlier, the acting EFCC chairman, Ibrahim Mago, in his remark called on all Nigerians to join in the fight against corruption, noting that government cannot do it alone. We are all Nigerians, so all of us have equal responsibility to do what we are doing, I mean fighting corruption. Yes, everybody in this room has a responsibility in the fight against corruption. And no person can sit down and say he can fight corruption alone. The evil in corruption is affecting everybody, every Nigerian, both within and outside Nigeria. Some people have to run out of this country to escape from the, the evil in corruption. So wherever I find myself, I want to appeal to every Nigerian to join in the fight against corruption. He, however, assured the Commission of EFCC's readiness to support and partner with the Commission in the discharge of its mandate. In Abuja, LM Chukwemeka reports. Minister of State for Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, has said that the federal government and six Northeast states have spent $6.4 billion on intervention in the Northeast between 2016 and 2017. The minister made this known at the launching of the Humanitarian Response Plan for the Northeast Nigeria in Abuja. The minister explained that the HRP being launched was also in line with President Muhammadu Buhari plan and United Nations Development Partnership framework. According to her, in 2016, $3.3 billion was spent on intervention, while in 2017, another $3.1 billion was expended. She said that a similar amount is being budgeted in 2018 budget, which was still work in progress. Mrs. Ahmed said Nigeria government as part of a commitment specially and now the sum of $1 billion for security in 2018. She also appealed for more resources 
to meet the immediate needs of nearly 7.7 .7 million people in their need of humanitarian assistance in the area. The organized labor has submitted a fresh demand for higher minimum wage to the Tripartite Committee on Minimum Wage. The Nigeria Labor Congress stated that it had demanded above 56,000 Naira to the committee to reflect inflation and other economic reality in the country. The Atin NLC President Kiri Mohammed disclosed this at the delegate conference of Nigerian Civil Service Union in Abuja. Mohammed, who declined to mention the exact figure the organized labor was demanding, explained that it was a joint decision between the NLC and Trade Union Congress. Reacting to the report that the new minimum wage might not be paid this year because it was not captured in the 2018 budget, the NLC chief expressed confidence that the minimum wage bill will be passed by the National Assembly and implemented by the federal government. Mohammed explained that the government who implement the recommendation of the Trapetite Committee on Minimum Wage, stressing that President Muhammad Buhari was committed to implementing the outcome of the ongoing negotiation for the new wage for workers. The Alton NLC President, however, complained about the slow pace of negotiations by the Trapetite Committee, noting that it had not had any meeting since it was inaugurated. Lovely place, right? Yes. What's wrong? You don't look happy. Take a look around. Why can't my hotel be like this? I knew something was wrong, but I've got solution. Solution? What? Nanet. Nanet? Nanet offers you design solutions, building plans and construction, furnishing and equipping, financing, management, audit services, and many more services for a better hospitality business. Nanet, service with a smile. Ahead of the 2018 Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination UTME Computer-Based Test slated to hold in March this year, the Minister of Education Malama Damadam has expressed satisfaction with the facilities in some of these examination centers. Malama Damu, who spoke to journalists briefly after a tour to some of the centers in Abuja, said that he is happy with what he has seen on ground. The message to students is that they should come and use the facilities here, and uh, I hope they are computer literate. Uh, if they are, they probably don't need the help of the people they'll find there. I think everything is alright. Jam Register Professor Ishak Oloyede, who monitored the centers together with the minister, said the board is doing the job it was asked to do by the minister. The Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination, UTME, is a computer-based standardized examination for prospective undergraduates in Nigeria designed to assess problem solving, critical thinking, knowledge of scientific concepts, and principal significance of each subject taken. In Abuja, LM Chukwemeka reports. Lagos State Governor Akin Umiambode 
assigned Lagos State Electric Power Reform Bill into law in an attempt to ensuring 24-hour power supply in the state. The law will enable investors to generate electricity for the state and afford the state government to upgrade power infrastructure as well as tap into the gas market. The power reform bill was one of the seven bills the governor signed into law this week. Other laws are amended land use charge law, school of nursing law, cooperative college law, cancer research institute law, amended customary court law, and Yoruba language preservation and promotion law. Commissioner for Energy and Mineral Resources Olawale Uluo said the power sector reform law will allow the state government to intervene in major areas of the power value chain to the overall benefit of the people. According to the commissioner, the law puts the government in the position to be able to extend its guarantee to private sector participants who will come and generate power. Commissioner for Information and Strategy, Mr. Kendi Bangbeton, said the signing of the law aptly confirmed and by the commitment to institutionalize and enshrine good governance. Edo State Governor Godwin Obasiki has banned night brazing and armed S men in the state just as he set up a seven man committee in each of the 18 local government areas to check S men and farmer clutches. The seven man committee will include the chairman or head of LGA, the divisional police officer, representative of the Department of State Service, and four representatives from the community in the state. Obaseki, who presided over a stakeholder meeting with the Saikin Aousa Fulani leaders from the 18th local committee of the state, charged the committee to review all cases of S men and farmer clutches in all the local government area. Obaseki added that another committee that he who aid will have the state commissioner of police, the director of DSS in the state, and the commander of four brigade and representative of the community across the three central district of the state as member. Chairman Edo State Hausa Community, Alaji Badamosin Salem, advised that the mechanism should be put in place to protect the informant as most members of the committee find it difficult to volunteer. Alaji Usman Abdullah represented the Hausa Fulani community in Edo Central Central District, pledged that his people will cooperate with the state government and work with the security agencies in the state to fish out criminals among its people. 